Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. One of my favorite devices of all time is the Steam Deck, and really it comes down to the operating system it's running and the hardware that Valve chose to use here, but sometimes I wish I could get a little more out of it. So I went ahead and built a small form factor Linux gaming PC using kind of the same operating system we have on the Steam Deck to get that same feel. But this thing is packing a lot more power than the Steam Deck's 4-core, 8-thread APU. I'm looking for high-end 1440p maxed out gaming here with this small form factor Linux PC. And I think with the parts I opted to use, we can definitely achieve it in Linux here. Now, as you can see, the operating system definitely looks the same. I've installed Decky, so it does look a bit different. We'll talk about that more in just a second. But I did want to give you a rundown on what's going on here with the hardware and the software I have. So I was definitely looking to go very small form factor with this PC. So I opted to use a case that I recently picked up on Amazon known as the GU7 SFX Small Form Factor Mini ITX PC. And of course, we know that the Steam Deck has a four core, eight thread APU, but with this, I needed more. So I added a 16 core, 32 thread AMD CPU, and it's actually an all-in-one motherboard from Menace Forum. We actually took a look at that a few weeks ago on the channel and we paired it up with a different CPU. Now in this video, we've got a lot to cover, a lot to test, but before we get started, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. If you're not familiar with this easy to use video editor, that's totally fine. You can actually download a free trial for Mac or Windows. And with their newest release of 13.2, we're getting a plethora of new AI features that are absolutely amazing. Going into this, I was actually really surprised at how much is offered here with Filmora. But I just wanna show you a few new things like their AI music generator and their AI translation system. So I've got a video here that I recently imported. And the first thing I wanted to do here was add some music, but you know, getting into music on YouTube does get a bit sketchy because uh, you know, some of the stuff can definitely get taken down. But with their new AI music generator, it's actually easy to get fresh music in your videos. We're gonna head up here to audio and we've got a new section, AI music. What this is gonna do is generate some AI music that we can choose from and add to our video. So just give it a little while to finish up. Now we've got our generated music. We can add this directly to our video. Now we've got some background music. This is great for small sections, B-roll and stuff like that. But one of my favorite features that's recently been added is AI translation. We're gonna go ahead and select that voiceover audio. And right here, we're gonna choose AI translation. Now this is really crazy the way it works. Basically, we can translate our voiceover to several different languages. And for this, I'm gonna go with Spanish. We'll do translate. We'll let AI do its thing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down my voiceover track and the music just so we can hear this a bit better. But this is amazing. I can now speak Spanish. Esto nos dará 16 cursos. So yeah, I was truly blown away by these new AI features built into Filmora. And if you're interested in trying this out for some video editing, I'll leave links down below. It works for Windows or Mac, and they also have a free trial over on their website. The Menace Forum BD790i does come with the motherboard and CPU plus cooler. It utilizes SODIMM RAM, but I did have to add more parts here to get this up and running. Like, of course, a GPU that can handle 1440p gaming. And when it comes to Linux, I personally love using AMD mainly because of game scope. Now, gamepad UI or big picture mode can run on anything, even integrated Intel graphics. But in order to get all of the goodies that the Steam Deck has, you will need a Radeon GPU. So the specs are as followed. For the CPU, I opted to use the AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX, 16 cores, 32 threads, and yes, this is a mobile CPU. But what I did was use Minisform's new BD790i all-in-one motherboard. Comes with that CPU, soldered to a mini ITX motherboard, and a cooler slapped on top of it. I did have to add a 120 millimeter fan. I've got 32 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600 megahertz a two terabyte Kingston Fury M.2 SSD. GPU is gonna be handled by the AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE. They finally brought this over to the States and I think it's an awesome performer. Been doing a lot of Linux testing with it. And yeah, if you're looking for a high-end Linux GPU, this is one to definitely think about. I'm using the ASRock Phantom Gaming version with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. And for the case, I'm using that GU7 SFX small form factor mini ITX case. 
And of course, most other people would install Windows on a machine like this, but I wanted a Linux experience, and I kind of wanted that Steam Deck interface going on with all the little bells and whistles. Unfortunately, Valve hasn't released a Steam Deck image to allow us to install it on other systems, so I'm using Chimera OS. This has everything we need built in. Very easy to use, super easy to install, rolling updates. You're just going to flash it to a USB drive. You can install this on basically anything. But again, those Radeon cards are really where it's at. Even a Radeon iGPU in order to get all of those little features that the Steam Deck has. It's using Proton, just like the Steam Deck. And we do have a built-in desktop interface. So if you wanted to use this as a full desktop PC, you definitely could. Now, if you're interested in learning a little more about Chimera OS, I will leave a link to the official website down below. But let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I've got everything installed, up and running. I did test out a few games just to see how this thing performs, and yeah, it's definitely putting down some power. This might look a bit different than, you know, your regular old Steam Deck interface. That's because I've actually got Decky installed here with CSS Loader. Basically, we can download new themes, kind of set this up the way I like it, and yeah, I mean, I think it looks really good. Now, before we get into it, I do want to show you Settings, System, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 7945HX, 16 cores, 32 threads, definitely overkill, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and of course that AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE. 16 gigs of VRAM, and yeah, I mean, this should definitely handle 1440p gaming with all of the newer stuff, and for older stuff, we could go up to 4K and beyond. Really depends on what you're playing. You can see we've got our performance overlay, and if I turn this all the way on, you can see, I mean, we've got those 32 threads there listed, just like we would on the Steam Deck, but remember, that's got four cores, eight threads. I've disabled the frame limiter for all of the games, but you can always set this up however you'd like. We also have support for VRR, or variable refresh rate, allow tearing, half rate shading. I really didn't have to change much of anything here. I just wanted no limit on that frame rate so we could see exactly what we get out of all of these games. And one other thing Chimera has built in right out of the box is Proton GE. So you can go in and swap over. I'm going to be using Proton GE latest version as of making this video for each of these games as long as it works. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. And we're going to start off here with Hogwarts Legacy. One thing that really kills me about the Steam Deck itself is when you're processing these Vulcan shaders. But with these 16 cores and 32 threads, it gets it done really, really quickly. So with all the games that I tested, I didn't want to use any kind of FSR. So I left it off with everything that you're going to see in this video. And we're at 1440p. Of course, some of these games can run at 4K Ultra on this GPU and CPU combo. But with this, we're at 1440p Ultra, no FSR. And by the end, we averaged 141 FPS, which is more than enough. I actually had to go back and just check to make sure that I was at a true 1440p. And yeah, I mean, it's maxed out at 1440p. Pal World, 1440p, very high. We don't have to worry about FSR with this. It's not added into the game yet. Hopefully the developers do add it later on for the uh, lower end GPUs. But with something like this, not an issue. I actually thought we'd see a bit more at 1440, very high. We only had an average of 81, but, you know, we are maxed out here with this game. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1. Now, you'll see that I'm at medium settings, and that's because I only have the option for low and medium. I'm not exactly sure if it's detecting, you know, Steam Deck hardware or something like that, only giving me those options. But I could have sworn I've tested this before in Linux, and I was able to go up to Ultra. But with this, I only had that medium option. Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, extreme, no FSR. This is one of those games that will run at 4K extreme on this setup here. And it looks like I'm actually getting better performance here in Linux than I did with Windows, doing the same kind of test with that 7900 GRE. Now, it was paired up with a different CPU, but a more powerful CPU, so this is a bit odd. But I'm seeing around 20 FPS more here in Linux with Forza Horizon 5. It's been a while since I played The Witcher 3 at a higher resolution, kind of maxed out, and I forget how good this game really does look. 1440p, ultra, no FSR. We average 82 FPS, and I thought we'd be up in the hundreds, at least 120 and above, but you know, it does take a lot to run this game, even in 2024. 
Here's Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, 1440p, very high, no FSR, over 100 on average, and it does look quite good. I'm going back and playing through this. I did play through it on the PS5, but now that we've got it on PC and I can really crank those settings up, I just kind of want to go right back through the game. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p Ultra with no FSR. For the most part, through all of my testing with this game in Windows versus Linux, I've seen better performance in Linux more than not. I think CD Projekt Red has done a really good job kind of optimizing this for Linux, or more specifically the Steam Deck, and it does transfer over to other distros. If you're using Proton in Linux with this and a higher end card, you can definitely expect to see a nice little bump in performance over Windows. So one game I really wanted to test here was Helldivers 2, but unfortunately it kept crashing for me. I was able to get into a little bit of gameplay, it crashed one time, and then every time I tried to boot it up, it did the same thing. I'm just not seeing good compatibility with the system I have here and that game right now, but I know a lot of people have been playing it on Steam Deck. I think uh, the developers have been kind of working out bugs to get this to work a bit better in Linux. But overall, yeah, this thing performs absolutely amazingly, and you don't need these kind of specs to run a nice little Linux gaming PC. You could pick up a used RX 588 GB model and see some awesome 1080p performance out of a distro like this, or you could go ahead and just install something like Manjaro and run Steam in it. But I like having that Steam Deck interface. All the little bells and whistles are here with Chimera OS, and it's a real great couch gaming PC. I mean, we've got a small form factor. We can basically put it anywhere and game at high resolutions and high frame rates on this setup. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links for everything I use. Plus, remember, you can always head over to Chimera's website, download the distro, and try it on the hardware you already have. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.